Give a warm pachyderm welcome to uh, my good friend Bob Lutz. So am I going to be on the BBC? That's all I really want to know. Because <laughs> that would mean a lot to me. I'm going to put my glasses on. Um, first question I'll ask is, how many in the room played some form of Little League youth baseball when you were growing up? So lots of hands went up. Some of you may not have had an interest in doing that, but you all had an opportunity, I presume. Uh, in Wichita, in the urban areas of Wichita, for many years, I noticed, because I'm a baseball guy, I always have been, St. Louis Cardinals. Thank you. I noticed that in inner city urban Wichita, there was no facilities, there was no interest, there was nobody beating the baseball drum. Kids were playing sports, obviously, but they weren't playing baseball. And it bothered me because my son grew up playing baseball. I grew up playing baseball. And for years and years, I thought, someday. For years and years, I thought, someday. A lot of people think, someday. But what inspired me to finally take action was a phone call to a radio show I was on at the time in which we were discussing youth baseball why kids weren't playing, why African-American kids specifically weren't playing. And it was a hot topic. Carried the show for probably an hour. Many phone calls, discussion. I get in my car after the radio and I'm thinking, that was a, that was a good discussion. Again, lots of talk. As of then, no action. I got a call from somebody, I don't remember who, who told me, I really enjoy hearing you guys talk about this subject, but when are you gonna do something? And for some reason that ignited something in me because I don't think it's uncommon for people to have good ideas. I do think it's slightly uncommon for people to act upon them, to find the time to pour themselves into an idea, to be relentless and after hearing that gentleman kind of challenge me, I put it on Facebook, who wants to get together and talk about starting a youth baseball league for urban kids? And Todd answered, three others, we met, uh, there were five of us. Uh, I, was, I was hoping for more, obviously, but by the next time we met, there were maybe 15 of us, and then 20, and then 30. And people started to get behind this, and we met for several weeks with the goal of starting a league in the spring of 2014. Now, our first meeting wasn't until July 15th, maybe 13th, of 2013. So we had a lot of work to do. First year, we had 200 kids. 16 teams. We played on fields at McAdams Park that weren't worthy of having anything played on them. Uh, but we did our best and now we've grown into a league that's 600 kids, 43 teams. Thanks to the generosity of the city of Wichita that put a lot of money into our facilities. We now have a turf field for the little kids. We have two renovated fields for our bigger kids brand new restroom concession area. And now we're making a strong push toward building an indoor facility that would house baseball training and an academic center to, uh, to highlight third grade reading scores and middle school math skills. We're in the process, we have the land, thanks to Dave Murphan. Uh, now we're in the process of trying to raise a significant amount of money to make that happen. We feel like the educational component is great for our kids, great for our kids, uh, but that it gives us even more credibility as an organization and we can't wait. Uh, the goal is to have that building up 
and running for the 2020-21 school year. We're excited about that. <clears throat> so how do we make it work? Well, we're a nonprofit, 501c3. Every bit of, of uh, we, we give these kids uniforms, gloves, we provide the equipment. That all uh, requires the generosity of the community, which has been outstanding in its support of League 42. We charge $30 per child or family of siblings to play in the league. Uh, that is a drop in the bucket of what we need to operate, but it also allows our families to have some, some skin in the game, some money that's been allotted so that they, have, they feel like, okay, I'm helping support League 42. Our organization is based on sportsmanship, which you all remember sportsmanship, right? <laughs> I think I do. I think I saw it some when I was a kid. Uh, youth sports has gone off the rails in that regard, in my opinion. Of course, I'm an older guy. Uh, we don't just talk about it. We, we are out there every night enforcing it. We don't want people yelling, screaming at their kids to do better. We don't want umpires being confrontational. We don't want coaches yelling at umpires. Um, and we feel like if you play in a peaceful environment, the kids have a lot more fun yeah. rather than in an environment. Now listen, are we perfect at this? Heavens no. And we never will be. We're not, people aren't robots. They get emotional during games. And we understand that. But we strive for good sportsmanship. And for the most part, we've had it. I think in our six years, we've only had to eject three or four coaches, which is pretty good. Um, this year, none. And we're almost a month in. So we're proud of this league and everybody who's a part of it, from our volunteers to our coaches, to our parents, to our players, to our board, to those who support it, I believe have bought in and understand that we are dedicated toward making League 42 a staple of Wichita. That's something that's around here for long after we're gone. Are there any young people, really, really young people here? Okay. Well, there's, you guys are fairly young over here. It may not, it, you're not going to be gone for a while. Um, I would love to answer your questions about League 42. Uh, Todd mentioned that I'm a longtime media guy in Wichita. I still consider myself that because of the radio show I do. So, um, I still consider myself a member of the media, which I've been in this market for now more than 45 years and uh, have always enjoyed, really enjoyed my career. Was sad to see the ongoing demise of newspapers, as we all, I hope, are. Um, we hope that journalism finds a foothold in another arena at some point. Uh, because it's v it's very very important to democracy. I don't want to get political. You guys, that's kind of what you guys do. Hello. Um, you mentioned right now that you first had trouble getting kids to come out. I have a son who's, who's coaching football in South Carolina. It's a junior high, and he's trying to coach football. But he's having trouble getting the students to come out. How did you help get the students to come out? Well, thinking back to that time, it's remarkable, uh, really, the, the, the number of people that we were able to get involved that went out and recruited, that just went out and went from door to door in the community in which we were trying to serve, went to where those folks hung out, uh, got our word out. Really, almost every day we were doing something just to try to say, hey, we're starting this thing up. We hope that uh, you have an interest. Do you want to enroll? And we were able to get 200 kids. Uh, now, uh, we have to barricade ourselves inside a room to keep people from finding us. Uh, it's not that bad, but we, uh, 
we had more than 100 on our waiting list this year with 600 enrolled. So uh, there is a need. I knew there was. I really always felt like there was. This is not a surprise to me. Um, others are like, wow, you guys got this many kids. Well, I, I'm not surprised by that. Um, I'm surprised that, um, that we're able to make all this work. We have an unbelievable group of people and umpires and imagine 43 teams, which requires a head coach. So there's 43 people that have to step up and say they're willing to be with these kids. We require at least two assistants and often three per team. So that's another 86 to 129. How do you like my math skills? That was, I just did that off the cuff. And then we have something we call a team ambassador on each team, and that's just somebody to help out with whatever the coaches need and whatever the team needs, make the snack schedule, whatever it is. And we're able to field 43 teams. And that, to me, that's the surprising part of it, I suppose. Finding that many coaches, that's not easy. Uh, we, we ready for the next question? I am. I don't know if I answered his, but that's not important. As long as I get to talk, that's all. <laughs> Uh, underprivileged kids, 600, that's a lot. Basically, they're from underprivileged homes, many of them. Some of those families do not have a car. Transportation, to and from, I mean. I pick up, a, I coach a team in our league, and I pick up one kid, or our coaches, or we, 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 we thought transportation would be a huge issue perhaps even to the point of being a debilitating issue. But it hasn't been. Uh, these folks, these families that are interested, they find a way and they get their kids there and we're very happy about that because that has not been much of a factor for us. Now that's not to say there aren't some families that really struggle with that, but for, for the most part it's worked out. I did want to mention the uh, breakdown of our league, and this is from last year, 41% African American, 31% white, 27% Hispanic. We're very uh, attuned to keeping those numbers about where they are, maybe even more African American kids, uh, but we're very happy with our numbers in terms of our diversity. It's a great place to spend an evening because you're around people from all walks of life. Uh, it's just very inspiring for me to be out there on a nightly basis and to get to know these families. I make every effort to get to know as many of them as I can. That's why we don't do online things. We do in-person things, including registration. Uh, some of the people have said, why don't you do, what, what's, are you not 21st century? Uh, the reason we don't do online is because of the personal nature of League 42 and the relationships. Uh, I want them to know me and others in our organization, and I certainly want to associate a face and a name uh, with the people who are part of League 42. Hi, I'd like to know, uh, do you guys keep score? Is there winners and losers on your team? Okay, that's the reason why I was asking this is because my grandson played, and uh, I've watched him play for, you know, two and a half hours, and nobody won, and nobody Where was this? Uh, this is uh, over in Andover. And uh, so I thought that was unusual because when I played baseball, we had winners and losers. So, so do you Well, I get this question a lot. Why aren't you competitive? And if anybody who knows me and thinks I'm not competitive, <laughs> I'll play you in anything right now, sir. We'll stop the meeting and go right over here. No. We don't keep scoring our t-ball games because that's an introduction to the fundamentals of baseball. There's, it'd be silly to keep score at a t-ball game, okay? But we keep score at our coach pitch and then our two levels of kid pitch. In fact, we have great new scoreboards on, three of, on all three of our fields uh, that we use, and we like them. And uh, they light up every night, and it's, the numbers change. So yes, we do keep score. 
However, I encourage our, our kids not to get caught up in wins and losses and to get caught up in what they're learning about life, uh, the fundamentals that they're learning about baseball, and those kinds of things are more important to me than the final score of a game. Is that the right answer, wrong answer? I heard no applause. Usually people, usually people break out with wild applause. No, but nobody has ever broken out in wild applause. <laughs> We're too busy absorbing all this great information from you. Oh, that's good. Hey, um, my question, um, how many teams have you had and have gotten close or have made it into the College World Series, or the uh, Little League World Series? And how many of kids have gone on to college? And can you speak about the uh, inspiration of the form too? We are only in our sixth year, so we have not had any players go to play college baseball. We did have 31 on high school rosters this spring. Um, thank you. Yeah, wild applause is always welcome. So we're proud of that. Uh, we're getting better and better with each passing year. We start them at t-ball, so by the time they get a little older, they're obviously going to improve. and. Uh, get better. I started coaching a team in League 42 when we, when we started the league, T-ball, along with a very good friend of mine who we had coached baseball together for many years at West Urban and we'd been in the competitive environment traveling to tournaments virtually every weekend uh, doing all that. So I've been, I've been around baseball a long time. I know what that's like and I also know what League 42 is like. So I'm in my sixth year now with this team. We still have four kids from that T-ball team. And uh, my hope is to coach for four more years. And uh, by that time, this team will have gone into high school. And uh, it's been very rewarding. Plus, we're six and one, sir, so. <laughs> Not that that means a lot. But by God, we're six and one. The age limit. The age limit. Yeah, I'm going to get to the name. Okay. The age limit is five through fourteen, boys and girls. We have a lot of girls, almost a hundred. A lot of them play in the younger divisions. By the time they get in the older divisions, they found out that they like maybe move on to softball. But we do have a good number of girls in our older divisions too, and they compete and they do well. You probably can guess why we're named League 42, and we struggled to find a name. Uh, somebody just blurted it out when we thought we, we should honor Jackie Robinson. And uh, so that's what we do. League 42 honors Jackie Robinson and everything he stood for. In fact, we are going to put up a statue, a life-size bronze statue of Jackie Robinson at McAdams Park. More applause, thank you. Um, our hope is to get that done for opening day 2020. Uh, we've got a sculptor, we've gotten approval from the Jackie Robinson family. We think we have the funding at, in place or close to in place. And we believe that as part of the 17th Street beautification that's coming starting later this year, and by the way, that's going to be incredible. I don't know how many of you know that's coming, but from Broadway all the way east to the canal route, they, the city is going to make 17th Street a viable thoroughfare to Wichita State's campus. And they're going to do some great things. And the thing that, believe it or not, the thing they're most excited about is the Jackie Robinson statue. So we're really, really pumped to get that. Yeah, you indicated you had a uh, hundred kids on the waiting. Is that for lack of coaches? Or That's because we, we just don't have the room to grow. We only have three fields. Now we want to add a fourth. That's in our plans. But um, I used to have a grand design of eight or nine hundred kids and let's grow this thing. I don't have that anymore. I want this thing to be streamlined. Uh, I hope that we never get much above 600 kids. 
Uh, I want to do, uh, we talked very early on about wanting to do this league in a very high quality manner. Uh, we want it to be the, the quick trip of youth baseball leagues, right? Quick we all think quick trip does a great job. So we want this to be the quick trip of youth baseball. We want it to be A number one. Everybody, we want everybody to have a good experience with it, and uh, that's our goal. But we're not going to grow much, but we do need another field. We've lost games the last three nights, and we, we will be making these games up uh, into 2023. That's a joke. <laughs> See, I'm, some of my humor, not that good. <laughs> Who's next? Hi. Um, first, I grew up reading your study Eagle and remember your name specifically as a byline, so thank you for helping me learn to read. That was awesome. <laughs> nobody's, ever, nobody's ever given me credit for helping them learn to read before. But. Uh, thank you. You, you addressed the main thing there's a focus on socio or economic groups for the kids that play ball. Do you partner with any other organizations that also focus on that? We don't necessarily have a partnership, but we have close relationships with uh, organizations like the Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. We're serving a lot of the same kids. Um, so I, I, we, I wouldn't call it a partnership, but uh, they, know of, they know of us and we know of them and uh, we're all trying to do good work for kids. And the, the education part of what we're, we're planning to do, we believe will enhance uh, what we're what we're doing we, we, we're, we have a concern that too many kids can't read by the time they're in the third grade so our goal is to do whatever part we can to enhance that to help kids learn to read I know from experience as I'm gonna guess a lot of you do middle school math be, starts to become really hard for a lot of us right Apparently we got a lot of mathematicians in here. Uh, for me, it became really hard, but so we're gonna we're gonna give our middle school kids an opportunity to come in and get some instruction and tutoring on math skills. We think that will help them. Got a couple questions. What are your current needs as far as volunteers, equipment, those things like that? And also, you said that. Um, you, you want to give the parents a buy into this. Do they also volunteer at, at your league and what else do they do? We have some parents that are coaches for us, team ambassadors. Uh, they help us when we need help. Um, they, some of our coaches help us with field supervision during the evening so that we just keep an eye on things, make sure everything's going smoothly. Um, our needs are always going to be operational equipment, gloves, balls, bats, helmets, catcher's gear. Uh, we'll forever need that because when a kid comes to us and doesn't have a glove, we want to be able to hand him or her one. Um, and we, we do that and we work in partnership with some very good sporting goods people, BaseballSavings.com, Dicks. We, uh, we, were, we were robbed two times over the winter. I don't know how many of you heard about that. But there were two break-ins to two separate facilities. We lost a bunch of bats and quite a bit of other stuff, some sound systems, some stuff that, that hurt us. Um, so we went to the community and, and the media was unbelievable and they got our story out there and we were able to get back so much more than we lost. And it was extremely touching for me personally, and we, we are forever grateful. Because, as I often think, League 42 can't exist without the help of the community. Um, I, don't, I don't have much money, and what I have, I try to never spend. Ask my wife. So, <laughs> But um, we do need help consistently. Our operating budget right now is into the six figures, a little over 100000 per year. As we grow, and as someday we have to hire some people to run the league, that number is going to grow. So 
We're here for as long as this community will support us, like most nonprofits. Thank you so much for being here at the Pachyderm Club. Is that it? No, no, uh, no, I'm oh. not saying anyway. Just tell me thank you for being here. Uh, you did mention uh, you have a journalism background, and I would like to know if, uh, if it's legal to ask, can you give us a little bit of insight on two of your most interesting stories or things that you were involved in in your journalism career? Uh, that, that really stand out and that, that uh, have some inside information that we don't know about. Inside information. I don't, I don't know that I have much inside information. I, I had a very rewarding career. I was down at Derby uh, a couple days ago talking to a journalism class and telling those kids that from a very early age I was immersed in sports. It's all I thought about. It's all I did. And when it came time to think about an occupation, I almost said, I, I, I was in a panic. I've got to find some way to be in sports. And when my fastball topped out at 80 miles an hour, I knew that wasn't going to be it. <laughs> so I took a high school journalism class, not thinking really that it would lead me into sports. I'd been more interested in sports broadcasting, actually taking <coughs> my tape recorder to games and, and broadcasting the games into the tape recorder. But I found out that I had a little bit of an ability for writing and I honed it over uh, my college career and, and my high school career and I was fortunate enough to get a job at the Derby Daily Reporter when I was a junior in high school and then I was fortunate to get a job at the Wichita Eagle when I was a freshman in college. So very very lucky to fall in the way I did and uh, in terms of the highlights of my career there's really a lot you know covering college football bowl games and final fours and Wichita State going to the final four in 2013 and covering that with a team of reporters that included my son Jeff so that was uh, extremely enjoyable but really just writing you know, I love writing, and I don't do much of it now. I'm kind of, kind of giving it some time, but I write on Facebook. That's kind of my place. As a uh, as a recent high school graduate that played two years of varsity under Coach Hour, my question for you is: Is a Coach Hour or Carl Taylor a better basketball coach? <laughs> really, you're asking that question. A better basketball coach. Well, Joe Auer is a tremendous coach, as was Carl Taylor, who's now deceased. So I'm going to tell you that he's not a great – I mean, <laughs> to me, the best basketball coach in the history of the City League was Steve Eck, uh, who won – who was at South for 10 years, won six state titles, won 227 games. Do the math, 10 years, even I can figure that one out, and lost 15 in 10 years. Um, Joe Auer is the winningest coach in City League history. He passed Carl Taylor uh, for that. I, you, you can tell I'm not going to answer your question. Who's, who do you think's the best coach? Well, I'm, I'm impartial to Auer, so. Okay, well, you better say Auer. Yeah. Yeah. Both are outstanding. How's that for fence riding? Okay, anybody have any other questions? Uh oh, Carl's got one. The last time he had a question, it was a fight about the downtown arena. Just kidding, Carl. Boy, that shows we're both chronologically gifted. <laughs> that was that thing's been up now almost ten years. That's hard to believe. Yep, next year will be ten years. Yeah. Uh, paid for. If the weather is not a factor, how many games do the kids play in League Forty Two in the typical season? T-ballers this year will play sixteen. Coach Pitch kids will play 18. Uh, Monarch Division kids, which is 9, 10, 11, will play 19. And our oldest kids, uh, who are 12, 13, 14, are scheduled to play 20 games. So you get a lot of, a lot of games for a very little amount of money. And we love watching these kids play. We have a Showcase Saturday event coming up a week from Saturday, May 18th. We start at 8 in the morning. We go all day into the evening. I would encourage you to stop by, watch, uh, watch an inning or two, hang out, see what we're doing up close because I think it's important 
to actually see it rather than to hear me talk about it. When you see it, you'll be, you will be amazed. The question was partially answered in that the kids are given a glove to take home. I was wondering if you kept all the equipment. But the equipment must cost an awful lot of money. And uh, but basically, do they have jerseys for the team? Just, just a jersey and do provide that as well? They do have a jersey that uh, this year we worked out an agreement with Under Armour to provide our uniforms. So they have a nice two-button jersey uh, they're very very nice and a pair of gray pants um, that's about a twenty-five thousand dollar expense and uh, so you know we're dedicated to doing this right we don't want to just give them a t-shirt and tell them to wear their jeans that that would not make me happy at all and it's very important that I'm happy <laughs> Thank you for coming. That was great. Um, when and where on May 18th? At McAdams Park. Our complex is at the north end near 17th and Wabash Streets. 8 a.m.? Yeah, we start at 8 a.m. And if you want to come at 6, you can help us get the fields ready. <laughs> Do you think you're ever going to get to use the new baseball stadium? You know, we, we've already uh, reached out. In fact, Bob Moulet, who is the assistant general manager for the Wichita, whatever name you want them to be right now, um, he's actually coaching in our league. So we already have made some inroads with those folks. I've gotten to know their general manager. Uh, their owner has been on our radio show a few times. And we, we hope. We, we expect them to be a major part of League 42 and, and that our kids will have opportunities to meet uh, AAA players and, and to learn from them and to be around them. Uh, that's certainly something that we're very interested in. I'm, I'm extremely excited to have AAA baseball coming to Wichita. I hope all of you are. Uh, even if you have to walk a little ways, it'll, it'll, it'll be okay. Um, but it's a, it's a great deal. Yes, uh, <coughs> I know you're in the club. Oh. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask if you have a schedule that uh, we can get our hands on. Okay, that's a good question. Follow League 42 on Facebook. Are you all on Facebook? <laughs> if you're not on Facebook, I'd like a written explanation as to why. <laughs> Um, we put our schedule on our Facebook page every day, the, that day's schedule. Sometimes on Sundays, we put up our standings and the schedule for the entire week coming up. And that's all on League 42's Facebook page. And you can also see our photographers, Mel and Linda Gregory, do an unbelievable job of, of making this league visible through photographs. We must have 20,000 photos on that Facebook page going back to the to our very beginning and uh, it's a it's really a good tool for us. Do you uh, take advantage of your community voice or anything? The community, I'm sorry, I The community voice the community voice has written about us, yes. We've, we, uh, we would like to have a stronger relationship with them. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. We, we, we are very aware of the community voice and they are very aware of us and we, we value any time and attention they can give us. Any other questions? Okay. Here you go, all right. Hey, thank you all for having me. I appreciate it. Luke's <laughs> car.